John Sweeney, so there you have it. Scottish nationals have denied all along that you'd have to reapply from the president of the commission. We now hear it without any caveat. You will, and you might not even get in. I think President Barroso's remarks are pretty preposterous this morning. He's said that his position linking and comparing Scotland to the situation in Kosovo. Uh, Scotland's been a member of the EU for 40 years. We're already part of the you European Union. You haven't been a member at all. Britain's the member. Scotland's not the member. You're a member as part of Britain. If you go independent, you'll have to apply, he says. And all of our, all of our laws, uh, all of the arrangements that we have in place are all compatible with the workings of the European Union because we have been part of the European Union for 40 years. And the propositions that we've put forward are about essentially negotiating, by agreement within the European Union, the continuity of Scotland's membership of the European Union. And, of course, that position has now been you know, explained and debated and discussed and reinforced by some of the comments made by people like Sir David Edward, who's a, a former British judge of the uh, European yeah. Court. But he's not, the, he's not the... Pre we can all trade experts. We're talking about the president of the European Commission. And, you know, we've spoken to him since he gave that interview on the BBC this morning. That was an explicit intervention he made, that he wanted to lay out that Scotland should be in no doubt. It wasn't a slip of the tongue or maybe made up on the hoof. He wanted the people of Scotland to know that if they vote for independence, they will have to apply for European membership and they might not get it because it could be vetoed by one of the 28 members. Well, what uh, Mr Barroso uh, didn't say is that absolutely no member state of the European Union has indicated that they would veto Scottish membership of the European Union. Oh, the Spanish and Foreign Minister has. Well, the Spanish Foreign Minister has said no such thing. The Spanish Foreign Minister said that if there is an agreed process within the United Kingdom by which Scotland becomes an independent Scotland, an independent country, then Spain has got absolutely nothing to say about the whole issue. And that indicates to me quite clearly that the Spanish government will have no stance to take on the question of Scottish membership of the European Gee. Union because what's important here is that Scotland is already part of the European Union. We are part of the firmament of the European Union. Our laws are compatible with the European Union. We play our part within the European Union. And the only threat to Scotland's participation in the European Union is the potential in-out treaty that David Cameron wants, a uh, referendum wow. that David Cameron wants to have in 2017. So uh, the whole case for Scottish membership of the European Union is based emphatically on the continuity of the membership yeah, that we've not, built up over 40 years. not been a great week for you, have you? Everything you seem to want, monetary union, that's been blown out the water by all three of the main West, Westminster parties. Now Mr Barroso has blown out your membership of the European Union. You'd have to apply for that. It's not been a pretty, very good week for you. Well, well, on the currency debate, Andrew, uh, you know, you, you'll follow the debate very closely. You'll follow all of the, the, the information. The Sunday papers are full this morning of concern within the Better Together campaign about the backlash that's, going to be, that's taking place within Scotland at the bullying remarks of the Chancellor and his two cohorts. Is from Mr the Barroso parties. a bully as well now? Well, what Mr Barroso is doing is, I think, making an incorrect comparison okay. between Scotland and Kosovo. Scotland is in the European Union already, has All been right. for 40 years. Kosovo okay. isn't in the European Union. If um, you vote for independence and you do have to apply again to join, if you do get in, if you're not, it solves your currency problem because you will, as part of membership, all new members, you'll have to accept the euro, won't you? Well, what we've set out is our option on the currency arrangements, yeah. which would be to establish the currency union with the rest sure, of the Sure, but United as a new Kingdom. member, you would have to adopt the euro, not the well, currency that's union. A, that that's actually not the case, because what, if you want to adopt the euro, you've got to be a member of the exchange rate mechanism for two years before yeah. you can actually undertake uh, to apply for, EU, uh, for euro membership. And an independent Scotland has absolutely no intention of signing up to the exchange rate mechanism and therefore no intention of signing up to the single currency. What right. we'll concentrate on doing is setting out our arguments for maintaining the pound sterling, which is in the interests of the people of Scotland and also the interests of the people of the United Kingdom.